The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend out there. Starting the week off, four-day week, of course. Starting things off on Tuesday morning, and we got markets barely in the red this morning. We have an S&P. We'll call it flat negative by less than one point zooming in on the action on friday quite a little sell-off early in the session you accelerate higher into the close a little bit of volatility on that friday action over the labor day weekend you actually trade higher in terms of over labor day itself monday you trade to a high of 40 548 right around that area we're about 15 points off that level you see the market catches a bid at about 5 30 in the morning you trade up about eight points coming into the open though all the markets right near flat we got the s p's negative by one you have the nasdaq 100 negative by one right now you got the dow negative by 13 and you get the russell within about half a point of where it closed on Friday. We'll call that flat as well. Bitcoin with some volatility. How about that? Up to 53,125. Right now, you're back to 51,095. You get back $2,000. El Salvador, they are going to be recognizing Bitcoin as a currency. Uh, stores there, businesses going to be required to accept Bitcoin as a form of currency. Uh, some analysts coming out saying that's really not going to be put in the bid that you might expect into the cryptocurrency bitcoin but nonetheless catching a bit we put bitcoin back on a daily you see the acceleration we're bumping up to the 618 of the full move we had from the 65,520 high back in April, you trade down to under 30,000. We've now clawed back 61.8%. Keep your eye on that. We're literally bumping right up against that level this morning. 51,711 on my chart. Uh, and we're trading at 51,075. Crude backing off some of the acceleration it had. Accelerated into Thursday and Friday of last week. Above $70 this morning. We're back to 67.91 in crude. You got gold off $20. We have some dollar strength this morning. You got gold down $20 at 1812. Gold has had quite a pop. Now, interesting, talked about it on my show on Friday. Critical area for gold might be bumping up against a little bit of resistance here. That resistance correlating to where you were July 15th, also towards the end of July, also correlating to a 618. We just talked about a 618, right? In Bitcoin, correlating to the 618 of the full move gold had going from 1920 down to 1676 or that or thereabouts, bouncing up to that level of about 1827. The high on Friday, to get it in full context, you're talking about 1836.90. The high we have technically today, going back to the open, Sapphire. Yes, it was. Uh, last night, you're talking about a high 1833, $20 off that level so far on gold. Silver's down 30 cents. Silver giving back some of the gains as well it had. Look at that bar on silver. Let's zoom in. That bar on silver, you had a, almost a full dollar i think it was a full dollar 23.91 yes to 24.94 on friday's action this morning giving back some of those gains to 24.49 and notes and bonds the 10-year we're getting a little bit of lower price and higher yield this morning you got the yield on the 10-year this morning we're talking about 1.37 percent we're down about 13 ticks. Interesting, you get this type of action. We have no market move whatsoever, right? S&P is flat, NASDAQ flat, Dow flat, and we'll call the Russell flat. When you're within about five points on the Dow, one point on the Russell, one point in the NASDAQ 100. But we see higher yield this morning, uh, up about four ticks right now, four basis points. You're talking about a decent move. You get the tenure down 13 ticks. As we come into a uh, couple weeks from now, we're going to get another Fed meeting, late September. That'll be on the table. We just got, of course, the jobs number on Friday for the month of August. A tough number. Um, you know, for the first time, I, I, I really think that a pullback could be possible. And it sounds like blasphemy. I know it does. Um, but you're talking about a market that is just relentlessly higher. And what I was trying to wrap my brain around this weekend is that there's been so many revisions of what was expected when the economy charged higher and when the market specifically got ahead of the economic resurgence. And it seems like every time we miss on a jobs number that the market pretty much just represents the best case scenario 
as you progress a couple months into the future. And now, of course, the rationalization of the 200 plus thousand jobs added for the month of August was that the Delta variant um, was a four to six delay, four to six weeks delay of the economic resurgence that we're all expecting, hoping, pricing into the market. Yes, that's possible, but that's one case of many. And I feel like every time we get a type of miss like that, that there's no recalibration in the market to at least the recognition that the possible scenarios that could play out are now at least representing that there could be a much greater chance of a much slower recuperation of the economy and the jobs that we were hoping to add, um, particularly relevant this morning with the extra unemployment benefits expiring yesterday. You now have seven and a half million people, I think, just immediately losing that source of revenue. That was pushing a lot of spending. The whole point of that money was to keep people alive as they got back into the jobs that they would come back. We now expire those benefits at a time when we're only getting gaining 235,000 jobs. And this is a big fundamental, you know, head game of, of where we end up. It's a lot of personal bias that I'm spewing. That's the point of the show to give you some analysis and my own opinions. But it's something you at least want to keep your eye on because <clears throat> at least the pressure coming up on some of the jobs numbers in the next two or three months. I said there's there's only so long that you can argue these cases before you get to the point that you say, listen, we were wrong. It's not happening. The economy's not come back as quick as we thought. The benefits have now expired. Um, and we might not see the type of growth that we were pricing into these market prices. Now, I say all that, we get to the article that starts off the program this morning with Goldman, cutting U.S. growth forecast as consumer sees harder path. Now, it's a pretty slight cut here. We're talking about economic expansion in 2021, cut to 5.7% from 6%. What they do, though, is that they up the 2022 uh, forecast as they, they see follow through into more of a pickup in 2022. So even they are arguing, listen, we have a delay here in 2021, not as quick as we thought. We're trimming it from 6% to 5.7. We're pushing the 2022 forecast up to 4.6 from 4.5, explaining the downgrade in 2021. Um, excuse me. And this is their economist, Walker, wrote that American consumers are likely to spend less amid the Delta variant's emergence, fading fiscal support, and a switch from demand for goods to services. He added that supply chain disruptions had hit inventory restocking as well. So pretty pretty marginal in terms of the cut, but even Goldman's out there cutting for a real, you know, Wall Street analyst economist estimation. Uh, the bank also lifted its projection for the unemployment rate to 4.2% from 4.1%. So a pretty slight number, almost as slight as you could make it. But I don't see how you see that type of economic expansion with 200,000 jobs added. The point being is that, man, there's a lot to live up to in the next month or two, maybe three, you can make the case. But if you don't live up to it to then, what happens by the end of the year if we're not seeing some positive numbers out of September, October, November jobs? They're going to be here before we know it, folks. And people might not be waiting till the end of the year to find out how those numbers go, especially coming into a year where you're talking about we're up almost 20 percent in the S&P. Start off the year around 37, 3800. We're trading at 4500 right now in the S&P. Um, and tax tax hikes definitely possible in the years to come. It all might point to a little bit of selling uh, in the future. We'll find out. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free all of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down two points right now. NASDAQ 100 down about eight points. All the markets right near record territory. I think I heard today we're talking about 56, 50-something 50 record highs in the S&P. And not surprising, if you take a look at the chart, you put it on a daily basis. This thing starts at record territory to begin the year. And we have not had that many pullbacks, folks, in this market. That is a weekly. You put this thing on a daily and you back it up to there's the beginning of 2021. You're talking about records everywhere in this. And um, barely a pullback. It's a pretty well-defined channel line. I've been talking about it many times. You put this thing even on a three-year weekly back to the lows. You had a little bit of some outliers, maybe to the low in the bottom. This channel line originally began on my charts. You're talking about from the November acceleration. They correlate pretty well. Whether it's the highs that we had around that area whether it's the lows from November 2nd when things really accelerate in the market. We come down to that area around March. And as you can see, whether it was June, July, or August, we get bounces on that level correlating right to the acceleration from November. Uh, and where we are in this channel line, you could be off of the higher area, or maybe we got a little bit of a smaller channel line dating back to about May uh, in the S&Ps. But no matter how you shake it in the NASDAQ, we're bumping up near the highs. You back it up to there's your November acceleration. This one correlates pretty well in the lows in terms of November to the low in March to the low in May. I've talked about it many times. The NASDAQ bumping up towards the higher boundary of that line correlating to a trend line from February 12th as well across that level. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Jumping around to what else we got going on uh, across the market. So Bitcoin ETF is likely coming soon. Is it better just buy a Bitcoin? You know, it's interesting, all the articles coming out with Bitcoin in terms of, and that's really the point of this, right? We're going to have ETFs. It would be interesting if the first time you get an ETF, that maybe that's another high. I mean, it's not a coincidence. I've talked about it many times. You back things up to where Bitcoin makes its all-time high. The day Coinbase goes public, not a shock at all. And then you back down to 30,000. We've got almost a second acceleration at a time when basically that's an impending that the market's thinking about it. But we're bumping right up against that 618 on the retracement of Bitcoin at 51,060. All right, folks, so let's jump over to our man Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern time on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network. Fast Market, Kevin Hanks, Alex Coffey and the team breaking down the action of the day, walking you through hypothetical trades, talking about defined risk and options. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, you know, uh, welcome to the start of the fall trading season. And, uh, you know, 
we're off to a pretty hesitant start. Let's put it that way. I mean, you know, we, we, we've got all four markets either unchanged or down less than a tenth of a percent. So I would say this is a very cautious, pretty cautious start to the trading week, though. Although you do have yields dr- uh, drifting a little higher here, but all things considered, a pretty uh, hesitant start to the week, Tommy. Kevin, you got right to it, man. I was going to say, kind of interesting that we do have a little bit of a move in terms of we got yields. We've got the 10-year down about 12 ticks. So you got a 10-year yield up to about 1.37%. The market really not, uh, no huge movement in terms of where we are, like you're talking about a tame movement to start things off. A little bit of a trim of the forecast out there from Goldman on GDP, Kevin. I'm going to get here, ask you, like, fundamentally, we've talked about it before, but we just got the jobs number on Friday. Of course, we didn't get to talk to you. We talked to you last on Thursday. A um, little bit of a miss on the jobs number. We got Goldman out there trimming things a little bit. Um, what do you see as these months come? We got a Fed meeting, of course, coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, I think there's a lot of expectations, you know, they're going to be built out. And what are you looking for as we kind of, you know, get into, like you say, the summer's past us. Man, it's still hot in Florida, Kevin. But for many, the summer's past us. We're getting into fall trading. People may be back at their desks or desks at home. What are you looking at on the next couple of months fundamentally that maybe you're just keeping on your radar of, of what the market is kind of anticipating looking for? Yeah, well, you know, the first thing that jumps out at me with Friday's number is the wages part. You know, the the wages part of uh, the unemployment data was hot at 0.6. That was higher than expected. The 235,000 jobs, I'm not sure what the miss was. I think, I don't know, was the miss the jobs or was the miss the expectations for the jobs? Because now that the benefits have worn off as of September 6th, you should start to see those seven and a half million people start to meet those jobs. So I think the expectations for this jobs data was the myth, not necessarily the number, because that collision between those people and those jobs, and we'll get a jolts number tomorrow morning that's expected to be right around 10 million jobs. That's the next big hurdle for this economy is to get those people aligned with those jobs. And when that dust settles, I think Jerome Powell will have a much better idea of the employment part of his mandate. And so I think that's still uncertain. And it may take more than 30 days to get through. But, you know, I think that's what we're really uh, looking at right now, Tommy, is getting all these open positions filled. What I think is so fascinating, man, and it and I, I think you're right that, you know, those estimates, man, put, talking about an August jobs number um, with benefits still there, obviously they weren't factoring in or whether it was even the variant, whatever it was. Um, but what I find so fascinating, Kevin, is that the market just takes it in stride, right? So even if it was a miss, um, the market just kind of just moves right past it and says, well, that was a miss. But that just means that it's all going to be coming due like the next month. And I just think the expectation, my own take is like, man, these these numbers coming up, whether we get you're talking about the Fed's always interesting when we get the Fed meeting because of what's happening with the volatility. But when we start getting the September, October, November jobs number, there's only so often so long, I think, that they can say that stuff. And the market just doesn't even budge, Kevin. It doesn't even move lower when the analysts, like you said, at least we're wrong, you know, at least in the best case scenario. They've just pushed things back. But I think the market is just turning to this best case scenario situation. And there's only so long. Maybe it can do that. Uh, we get some earnings this week coming up, Kevin. Still, we get some names out there. What are you guys going to be talking about uh, on the program today? Yeah, we're going to be looking at earnings like Folio is going to do a presentation on PayPal and the payment space today. As we get late in earnings, Tommy, as you know, the names get a little thin. So we kind of make our keep ourselves busy looking at other big, important names. So the focus of today's show will be the payment space. So PayPal today. And I love what you guys do, man. I love the trades, of course, that are based around earnings. I make those trades myself, whether you're just looking out to a Friday expiration of the week earnings. But I love the trades you guys do, Kevin, where you push it out, you know, six weeks or something like that leading into an earnings event. Maybe you're leading into the end of the year that we got some volatility coming up uh, in the payment space. Talk about a cool space, El Salvador. They're just bypassing all the dollars, man, going straight to crypto this morning. Uh, yeah. Let's see how that shakes out. I'm not Kevin, sure we how important an insolvent country is adopting crypto. I'm not sure how big of a move that is for crypto. I mean, no, obviously, I it jumped overnight, and it's come back down because I'm not sure that's the game changer that everyone thinks it is, Tommy.
I would I would agree. That's our own two takes, folks. But I would agree. Uh, one one analyst I was reading out there today said they got a bankrupt economy, unfortunately, and that's kind of yeah. uh, the trick right. they're turning to. Uh, Kevin, man, we appreciate the conversation as always. We'll be watching today. We look forward to the conversation about the payment payment companies out there. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Bye. You too, Kevin. Take care. Tune in, folks, every day, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Tiger TV, Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, and the team doing an outstanding show. We'll be back for the open, folks. Right now, we get the S&Ps down three, NASDAQ down five, Dow down 39. We'll be kicking off fall trading when we come back in about three minutes. Summer trading, no more. We'll see, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be coming back in three minutes for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got those tech stocks trading higher. NASDAQ only index in the green right now. NASDAQ 100, I should say, up by eight points. S&P's barely in the red by about five. We get the Dow dropping lower on the open right now. These are 15 minute bars we're looking at in the Dow. Dow down about 70 points, 35,284. The Russell flat this morning right now. Checking in commodities, we got crude. Down a dollar on the dot. We got gold down about $19, and we jumped to crypto. Bitcoin, 51160 uh, I think Kevin made a great point. 
And there's a bunch of people out there saying that point. But I think it's a good one. I agree. Uh, El Salvador, unlikely to spur more Bitcoin adoption. So Mark Mobius out there, uh, he is out there talking about basically saying uh, unlikely to spur in terms of demand. Now, the way he puts it, and I, let me just get down and find the exact quote and talking about. Yeah, Mobius said El Salvador's grasping its straws with Bitcoin. Uh, the Central American nation, unfortunately, a bankrupt country with real problems. Um, there are other available options to process, and they only bought 400 Bitcoins, folks. You're talking about $21 million. That is literally nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. Um, be careful out here. You got an ETF that's going to be coming to market. You got an ETF? Yeah, you may have some more buying. But, folks, when you talk about the retail exposure to Bitcoin, I mean, Robinhood has brought it to the masses already. I'm not sure an ETF is going to bring it to the masses. The one thing it might do is actually, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news type event uh, on that market. Bitcoin, just for some context as well, we're trading at 51,000. You're back to the 618 of the full move we had up. Maybe you had a lot more pumping in Bitcoin because it's the headline crypto out there. Ethereum almost made it back up to the all-time highs of 4406. You make it uh, above 4000 actually on Friday. You reached a high of 4056. You see a much bigger claw back of the losses you had in Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Ethereum, a stronger cryptocurrency in the recent run it had than Bitcoin. It's really tough to be to pick winners and losers, right? Is Ethereum or Bitcoin the better crypto play right now? Go. I'm not sure, and if anybody tells you they have a plan, that's their personal bias. But if you want money into the crypto sector, right, what you can always do is maybe you put $1,000 into you know, crypto. Maybe you put 5000 Maybe you put $100, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, point being, maybe that's your crypto fund. And then what you can do is you can trade strength versus weakness within the two currencies, right? So, you know, that is a point where Ethereum looks a lot stronger than Bitcoin right now on this recent run. We'll see how it reacts. You know, you have Ethereum down almost 4% right now. You have Bitcoin positive 1.8% technically, so varying a bit. But that's something to keep your eye on too and keep your mind around. That's one way, and I don't, folks, I don't own any Bitcoin. I don't own an Ethereum. Um, but if I had money in the crypto sector, I would be thinking about putting a portion that I wanted to use, a very small portion, because most of these, as long as you're comfortable with them, potentially going to zero. And then I would interchange those for different cryptos, depending on the strength or the weakness of those cryptos. And maybe by doing that, you're able to grow that more exponentially or exponentially versus what you're talking about. Um, if you're just trying to pick winners and losers between the crypto sector, when you're going to get some variations um, completely. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Uh, let's see, where do we start off? So an interesting one out here, I just want to comment on this. And, you know, it's a little bit of a comment. But so I'm looking through, I'm, I'm looking at what we have coming up, right? We have Lululemon earnings are coming up. We got GameStop earnings coming up. We got, uh, was it, Oracle earnings coming up this week. We'll get into that in a moment. So I'm always pulling up articles, getting ready for the program. And what I found interesting was I was over here, a Fox Business News article just came up trying to find um, news events, economic numbers this week, earnings out this week, you know, things to put on kind of your, your mind frame or what to look for, what's possible. I'm always looking for earnings events, maybe for trades in my newsletter. Uh, and what I found such a shame is that on Fox Business, and I'm not a fan of Fox, but this they all do this, what I'm about to tell you about, all right? Bloomberg does it, CNN does it, CNBC does it, is that they hawk the worst possible financial products that you could ever think of. And in this case, it's even better that Fox owns the one that they're hawking. So this is a product, let me get this back here, um, that I linked to. Now, I, so I'm, I'm just on a regular article here talking about the week ahead. And there was a link on here saying that variable, and I'm gonna scroll down so you can see where this is, okay? It's on the Your Money section. It says, uh, here's why variable rate student loan refinancing may be a smart move. And just by scanning this page, I said, what, what is that article? Who, who in the variable, who in the student loan refinancing business, uh, no, in market, consumer market, people looking to refinance their student loan loans with rates where we are the right now, why you would consider a variable rate? Yes, there is a slight benefit. We're all in the market, right? We know that if you if you don't lock in the rate that you have right now and you let it vary, yes, they're going to give you a little bit of a better rate right now. The risk on the other side of that 
when we're in a uh, Kevin just talked about it. There was wage inflation in the jobs number Friday, and there weren't the jobs that we thought we were going to get. Okay, so I said, I have to click on this. I said to myself, I have to click and see what this is, right? So I click on the variable rate student loan, and it brings me over to an article published today. Here's why variable rate student loan refinancing may be a smart move. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, this is sponsored by Credible, which is majority owned by our parent Fox. So Fox is out there at Fox Business and they all do this, folks, okay? That's the point. This is not a knock on Fox. It's just how I happen to Google them, find them, to, which is majority owned by our parent Fox Corporation and solely responsible for its services. And what it walks you through is that it just creates the best case scenario of if a borrower refinances $40,000 worth of student loans, you could save more than $4,600 on a 10 year interest rate. And that is because rates on the five year variable rate student loan fell to 2.59%. In contrast, rates on a 10 year fixed were 3.46. So if you lock in a five year variable rate, you don't lock it in. I guess if you just uh, secure a five-year variable rate, you can lock in 2.6. No, you can't lock it in. I keep saying lock in, right? This is the whole point. It's crazy. Um, it's just such a, a, a disservice to, to combine this. You know, it's a little bit of a rant, folks. People do it all the time. I hear ads on Bloomberg of Rudy Giuliani hawking some, some scam gold coin company. And I'm saying to myself, why does Michael Bloomberg, that's worth $55 billion, need to sell time on on their Bloomberg radio station for Rudy Giuliani to hawk gold coins for some company and, and siphon money out of people that don't know any better. I wish that these companies worth all this money would do a little bit of a better job of taking money from people that they really, you know, were doing a service for people because this is not a service saying that if you refinance $40,000, you can save maybe $4,600. Meanwhile, do you know the type of losses you open yourself up to if rates rise in a possible inflationary environment anyway keep your eye on that because you know we all have the ability to vote with our dollars and that stuff really frustrates me when companies that just have no need for these types of things and they're all over the internet all right and that's why i bring up well there's bloomberg fox cnn but to be hawking out there saying you know students potentially should be refinancing because you can save forty six hundred dollars unfortunately there are a lot of students with a lot of student debt that have no financial awareness that come out of student of a um, a degree that don't have the type of income, they might be looking to refinance and they might be trying to save every single nickel and dime they could and they might have no awareness that if interest rates are rapidly rise, how much they may actually end up costing themselves over 10 years on that 40,000 versus the potential few grand they might have saved. Um, so be willing to vote with your dollars, folks. We'll talk about it a little bit. There was an article out there, um, an op-ed by Soros talking about China. I'm gonna get into that as well because uh, China, I'm not going to be voting with my dollars for China anytime soon. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. 12 minutes into the trading day, and we have the S&P off about 12 points. You see the acceleration we got coming into the opening bell, and then 9.30, we strike at about 45.32. You're down about 10 S&P points there. NASDAQ with some volatility. Look at that action. We got the NASDAQ. You're talking about highs near 15,670. We're trading at 15,657. NASDAQ in positive territory. You got the Russell positive by five points as well. Interesting, you get that type of an acceleration in the Russell, and we got the Dow getting punished big time right now. Dow down a half a percent, 190. 92 points. I know Boeing's down big. Yeah, look at Boeing down 1.7%. Eventually, Boeing will be a buy at some point, folks. Um, but as I was talking about, you know, invest with your dollars, invest in what you care about and you believe in. That's part of it. I mean, it's very difficult to not invest any of your dollars in China. Um, but when you look at just the scope of the scope of what's happening in terms of Xi and what's going on over there and the lockdown in terms of the company, I don't use TikTok, folks, because it's pretty cool. Uh, I've been on it. But when they first changed their ser terms of service, I mean, they were able to get your fingerprint, I think, your your, your face recognition. There's so many things that they get in there. Um, just be careful on that one and be willing to vote with your dollars when you can. I mean, I have an iPhone. They produce their phones in China, right? I'm not oblivious to that fact. Um, I'm only willing to sacrifice so much in my personal life. I'm not going to just cut the cord and not, you know, and go live without electronics of any degree. Um, but it's something to think about because the world is changing. And when you look at what you believe in, what you vote for, um, there's a lot that you can vote for in your dollars. And talking about, you know, those those articles out there, whether it's Fox or Bloomberg, you know, and, and you know, whether it's Bloomberg allowing ads with Rudy Giuliani, Hawk and Gold or Fox pumping their own credible site to have student loan. Um, student loans refinanced with a variable rate. It's just such a disservice to everybody. I could never run a business and lay my bed, head down at night when I'm a, a company as big as Fox taking ads to pump financial products that talk about financing student debt on a variable basis. It's just ridiculous. Uh, Boeing, down about 1.6 today. You look at where we are on Boeing, you back it up to a three-year weekly. Could be. We're creeping actually below that trend line now. Maybe we're going to break that trend line. You put back on a five-year daily to see the full collapse. We got down to $89. You bounce off that area in October. You bounce again off that trend line exactly in July. And we've been skipping around that area. Now actually below that area, though, basically for the first time today, breaking that channel line. I know to our man Bud Rolfs, we trade lower. We come back. We test that channel line. You watch out. You could trade even lower from there. All right, jumping around the line, let's see what else we got going on. We got some companies out with uh, some stories today. We got JD. They're gaining a little bit today. Uh, they got a new president. That's a Chinese company. I would not be uh, investing in that. Boeing, yeah, so this is the deal with them. Ryanair is not going to purchase 10 737 MAX, uh, 10 billion, tens of billions of dollars it would have been. They cited disputes over prices. Not what you want to see for a company like Boeing that could use a win out there. So they're paying the price today down 1.6% on their shares. 
Spotify gets an upgrade to overweight from equal weight at Keen Bank. Let's see how they're trading on the open. SPOT. Never quite gotten into Spotify. I've been fortunate um, to have Sirius. Spotify up 5.1%. Still well off the highs earlier this year of 387. This is quite a volatile company. Down to 200 almost, 201.68. As recently as August 19th, you're up almost 30% uh, just in the last few weeks. For Spotify, all the markets creeping towards the red. We got the NASDAQ 100 down 10 points now. Let's see what else we got. Johnson Johnson, Merck, Amgem downgraded several of the big large cap pharmaceutical companies saying upside's limited for those names. Um, and yeah, Match Group, huh? They're joining the S&P 500 online dating, MTCH, MTCH. There's your pop-up, 6.7%, giving back some of the gains, climbing towards the all-time high, 174.68. Uh, but yeah, quite a quite an achievement for them as they, and they have so many brands, Match Group. I mean, they're associated with Match. Let's see if they list them in here. Um, yeah, okay, Cupid, plenty of fish, our time, Tinder. I mean, they they almost have a monopoly. Not quite though. You got Bumble out there, right? Is Bumble B U M B L? I believe uh, down 1.3 percent for Bumble today. Taking a look at Bumble, breaking out of the downtrend since they go public. 84.80. I had you see, kind of coming right in that area. Let's extend that one to the right there. We didn't come quite back and test it, but maybe that was your test there on August 25th and August 26th. We're going to activate that trend line. And, I mean, you could. It's always an art, not a science, folks. Maybe it matches up there, but uh, Bumble trading down 1.4% today, but we're up to $60. This would be a critical area, as you see, up to kind of the high we had on June 25th there. And look at these markets, folks. I would listen. If you have a ton of gains out there in a portfolio, all right, I love doing the news. I'm giving you a little bit more analysis today, breaking down, because even in my own newsletter, folks, give it a try. I encourage you, Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, we have equity trades. We have option trades, as the name uh, describes. For the first time, I'm really wrapping around that there's the potential, folks. I mean, you know, everybody's got their opinions of, of why we've missed the jobs numbers, right? But we had a missed jobs number, 235,000. I mean, these analysts ain't fools, okay, in terms of they were looking for 700,000 jobs, right, or something like that. They're not fools. They were just wrong. But the, the, the thing is, is that the market was pricing it off of some of the expectation that these analysts had. Then the analysts are proven wrong then the market does not reprice it. It just changes the rationale for higher prices to further in the future. That's the most fascinating part of this, is that it's not that there's a miss, it's that there's a miss, and that there's a complete recalibration of the reasoning that allows stock prices to go unchanged when there's obviously an analyst miss, but the market is pricing the price of equities off of some of those analyst estimations. So if they're wrong, the market should lead you to that. It's just that's you could you could go round and round on that, folks, where you end up. Um, you know, you figure that one out. You'll make a lot of money in this market. We got yields rising a little bit. As I said, we get the 10 year. Um, you're not going to get rising yields in a higher market right now. We get some rising yields. You watch out, which is why it was a little interesting that we had the 10 year down 12 or 13 ticks this morning and we had markets unchanged. Not often that you would see a rising yield to the tune of up about four basis points. So we were sitting at about 1.34, 1.33. We're sitting at 1.37 right now, and the market had just shaken it off. The market might not shake that off for too long. I mean, it's going to be dicey, folks. If you've got a lot of gains and you're carrying them into not necessarily the Fed meeting in September, because I think Chairman Powell's got enough ammunition from this jobs miss to extend things and not have to rush any type of tapering. But really, it's the jobs numbers. Because there's going to be a lot of expectations come September and really come October and November. September, if there's a miss, you can write the script yourself. Things just got started, right? Labor Day was September 6th. Everybody had benefits until September 7th. It takes a month or two to get a job. you got to wait for those numbers to come in. Okay, so if we miss in September, you know what they're going to say. The market looks like it'll listen. Then we go to October, though. Man, those excuses and those reasons, all right, not necessarily excuses, but they're reasons to excuse the misses. So they're kind of excuses. And those excuses are running out, folks. Listen, I believe in this market. We're going to be fine. All right. Please get out there. Get vaccinated. It's safe. It's effective. That's what's going to get us over this hump, folks. You want a strong economy? We've got to open it back up. That's the quickest and best way to do it. 
Um, but we might have some hiccups, folks, in the way because we haven't had many hiccups when this market's been up about 20% on a straight line shot to the upside uh, going back all the way to November last year. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have uh, all the major indices in the red right now. The Russell in the positive, but Dow, you're talking about negative 190. NASDAQ 100, negative 32. You got the S&Ps off about 15. Apple, and that's even with Apple, up six tenths percent. We got a new all-time high in Apple as well. Apple, I always talk about it, but I think it's 16.7 billion shares outstanding. So just today alone, you're talking about the companies added almost $16 billion in market capitalization. Even with that going on, you have the NASDAQ 100 in negative territory with the Dow off about 200. I talked about we got earnings going on this week. Uh, Wednesday, we get GameStop. GameStop shares this morning up about 1.4%. We jump over to the volatility that we're looking at. How about a $35 move in either direction uh, this week? Quite a move indeed for a, for a stock like GameStop, where any week you can move anyway, let alone with some volatility from the earnings potentially. $35, what's that? I mean, that's talking about, uh, what, just shy of a 20% move potentially on their earnings. But we know that stock moves anyway, 20%, give or take. We got Lululemon out with their numbers as well on Wednesday. 
Lulu, that's some volatility for you. More than a 5% move priced in for the event. We're talking about a $24, almost a $25 move for the week. This is where, folks, if you're trading options, check out Fast Market, uh, Lululemon. When you can do $25, so even directionally, you can have a $12 to $13 move as you can, you can be selling volatility, right? You can be selling puts or selling calls to somebody and you can get a $12 move and potentially break even, that's a, that's a decent move on this stock. Now, with that said, we know it's priced because that's the type of move they get. But nonetheless, Lulu, I believe they are out on Wednesday. Yes, they are Wednesday tomorrow now, right? So we got Lulu out tomorrow. We got GameStop out tomorrow. And uh, Oracle, I think we get out Thursday, which is another big one. No, no, not Oracle. Do they have it out there? Yeah, I think they're wrong on that one. Yeah, September 9th it could be, but I think they're wrong on the Oracle because I got them listed as the 13th in here. Nonetheless, GameStop, Lululemon uh, should be an interesting one. These markets got a little negative action to kick things off. The Dow really accelerating down 209, NASDAQ down 19. Thanks so much for starting your morning with me, folks, starting off fall trading. Stay tuned. We got live trading all day. We got our man Dave White. He is back today. We got Basil up next. Fast market at 11. Larry at noon. Steve Rhodes at 1 o'clock. Dave White at 2 o'clock. Tom O'Brien. My dad, I from 3 till 4. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.